package has arrived! It's from a hoo hoo! I can't wait! I've tried water-based markers before, but I have never tried full alcohol markers. So I am super excited. I was kindly sent this package by a hoo, hoo to test out their products. First up, we've got some black fine liners. There's eight pens in this set, ranging from 0.05 to 1, with a fine brush marker too. According to the packaging, they are smooth, waterproof, quick drying with no smears, which is everything I look for in a fine liner. But I have been fooled before. This happened a while ago during my first 100 heads challenge, when I used watercolor with cheap waterproof fine liners and made a huge mess. They were not waterproof. The thing with fine liners is that they can easily be bad. I'm always a bit skeptical of pens since that experience. There's a chance they could bleed and separate, smudge and not be waterproof. The packaging is sleek with good size options, but we need to thoroughly test them out to see if they're actually any good. Next up, they've sent a marker pad, which I'm super excited about. There's 60 sheets and the paper is 200 GSM. It's 225 centimeters by 210, which is a little bit of an odd size. It's almost a square, but not, probably because of the perforated edge, which is nice to have, but I don't tend to remove sheets from my sketchbooks. I have actually used an Ahuhu mixed media sketchbook before, even though I've never tried their markers. For Inktober, I was looking for a sketchbook that could handle India ink well and had over 32 sheets. That last part is a little bit hard to find, so I completed the entire Ahuhu sketchbook using ink, gouache and watercolour and honestly I really liked it. It's cool to have another one after just finishing my last one and now I can actually use the wood markers which was what it was intended for. Moving on to the big product, the markers. This is the 48 Honolulu 2 alcohol marker set. There's a range of colours and values and I am so excited to finally try drawing with alcohol markers. Markers. It comes in a cute black case with a handle so it's easy to transport and it looks like the perfect set. I have every colour I need and I guess if I'd like more I might be able to layer and create different shades. So this is going to be fun. Swatching was really fun but I feel like I probably should have used the chisel tip instead of the brush tip because it's a rectangular box. I think that would have been easier. I've seen a lot of these unboxing videos where people have said that sorting out the markers and doing the swatch sheet is a huge chore because there's so many, and I think this 48 set is probably the perfect size for it to be fun and not a chore in the slightest. I was expecting it to take a while, but it really didn't take long at all. I finished the swatch cards and how pretty do these look? I especially love all of the pinks and red tones. I'm going to be using these a lot. I did make a bit of a mistake. I accidentally got glass green and grass green the wrong way around. I kind of thought it was a typo because I couldn't find glass green, so... It's a bit messy. The biggest thing I noticed while swatching is that whilst the cap doesn't match a lot of the colours perfectly, the actual colour tends to be darker than the cap. So that's something to bear in mind. And I got two extra transfer sheets, which is fantastic. I've been using these a lot lately for the Daily Doodle Diary Challenge. Okay, first things first, I am a complete beginner when it comes to alcohol markers. I have no clue how to use them. We'll be coming back to the first page later and hopefully putting a lovely drawing there. But first, I need to experiment. I need to practice and figure out how to use these markers. I feel like the biggest test will be whether it smudges and whether it's waterproof, so we'll find out later. Let's attempt to blend something. We could try cherry pink into vivid purple. Oh, that is a gorgeous shade. Oh no, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. I 
You have to have a really steady hand for these, honestly. I don't feel like they're that forgiving when it comes to lines. Well, no, most likely it's user error because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I watched a couple of videos, but it's not blending as easily as in the videos. What about a really simple, potentially simple, like a yellow to orange? Can I mess up yellow to orange? It's always scary learning a new medium and trying a new medium for the first time. Like, it's exciting but it is also scary what am i doing oh this color is gorgeous you know what i think this might be my favorite shade i don't know is that better i'm kind of understanding now why you need so many colors because the colors have to be very similar to be able to blend if you're a beginner <laughs> i really love these brush tips though oh that's almost a blend are we getting somewhere these are the blends i attempted they're not good but the medium i use most is watercolor so maybe i'm just being a bit too hard on myself because i'm so used to that blending so well oh do you know what we could do For a little practice piece, we could draw something for the Daily Doodle Diary Challenge. If you're new here, it's an art challenge where I'm attempting to draw every single day of 2024. And so far, we've not missed a day. This isn't optimal paper, it's just lined paper. But I thought it'd be really fun to just draw something in there to practice, but we're not going to be able to get really good blends. If we could just ignore the weird little duck on the other page, that would be great. I'm thinking of doing just a really simple portrait. I found this picture on Pinterest that I thought would be really cute. I haven't used fine liners in ages, honestly. It's really difficult to try and get the lines good because I just don't have the experience with it anymore. I used to use fine liner for my line work, but I just haven't. I've kind of opted for color pencils more recently. Alright, should we give this a go? I don't think there's any way these markers are going to blend on this lined paper. Oh, this is so scary. Well, so far the fine liners are holding up really well. I decided to leave the red lines of the colour pencil underneath because, I don't know, I feel like it looks kind of cool. Oh uh, no, it's okay. I don't know. The lips, we might do quite pink and then just go over everything with the skin tone. I just thought if we're gonna practice, we might as well practice for today's daily doodle. I mean, she has a load of freckles, so I might just add the freckles first because maybe if we go over the top, it will blend out a little bit. I don't know if that's how it works. I'm thinking maybe salmon pink and rose beige. Okay, she's a little bit orange. Oh, I've just noticed most of the pencil lines have gone actually. I'm just gonna do bold eyeshadow just to blend it out, I guess. What if we do a green all over? Why don't I try the chisel tip? Oh, we could do emerald green, maybe. Oh, 
Okay, this is our gal. She's looking a bit tan. She's just come back from my beefer. Although I'm kind of now realizing it's giving a little bit of lumpa vibes. Wasn't what I was going for. That's the bleed through from the other side. And I kind of like it more. I don't know. I think it's really pretty. Maybe I will reuse this tomorrow. Let's move on to the good paper now. We're doing the very first page and we're going to be doing a portrait. I have an idea because the last portrait went so well. Well, I found this picture on Pinterest yesterday and honestly, how cool does this look? I love the portrait. So the portrait's gonna be here with like pink fluffy hair that looks like a cloud and then the background's gonna be like blue with white clouds with stars. It's gonna look super cute and pastel. That's the plan, but we might end up with another orange person. Ah, I'm gonna go grab some lunch first and then we'll come back and do this. Got my tea in a Christmas mug and I'm feeling refreshed. I'm going to be moving cows soon, so I thought I'd just quickly show you my setup. This is it. It's by a windowsill and I sit on a cushion and this is where my back always hurts. This is vinyl and honestly this is amazing and I love how light the videos look. I've got a microphone, I've got my DSLR as well as the digital. This is the setup and hopefully I'll have a desk in a few months, hopefully. I'm also super excited to decorate the house. It's going to be colourful, it's going to be bright, we're going to be hand painting a lot of things and it's going to be really cool. I'm filming the move and that whole series will be coming soon. As for the idea that I had, I was thinking before going into this drawing, I know I'm probably just procrastinating. I'm gonna draw some little heads and practice skin tones. Let's draw some ugly heads. That's kind of what we're going for. Here are the ugly asymmetrical heads. Eggs. I'm just gonna quickly try some things. I'm gonna try with a base layer, without a base layer, going into colours, doing the colours completely separate. We're just gonna try lots of different things here. It doesn't matter so much about the skin tone, but I would like to see how I can add the pink for blush and the blue for shadows. If it is like watercolour and that's what's done, I don't know if people just use different shades of brown or if they actually add blues and pinks. So I'm just gonna give it a go and see. <laughs> These are the little eggs, and what have we learned? Markers are difficult, it's gonna take a while to get used to them. Honestly though, I really like these pink ones, so I might do a unnatural skin tone. Should we give it a go? It's only on the first page, it's fine, we're not gonna see it very often. When I tell you that I've been nervous about this drawing for about a week, that's an understatement. I have this fear of creating art on the first page of a new sketchbook because what if it's bad? You have to look at it every single time you open it. I tried to conquer this fear when I filled my Cardi sketchbook with a portrait on the first page. That video will be down below. And honestly, it worked. I love that painting so much, and it's really satisfying to see it every time I use that sketchbook. But that doesn't make me any less scared going into this one. It's a new sketchbook. There's a pressure that the first page should be good. I mean, you don't want to open up a sketchbook and be reminded of a bad piece every single time. Plus, it's a brand new medium for me, so the chances of it going well are slim, especially with the orange girl we just created. That being said, this drawing is kind of shocking, especially when you remember that just 10 minutes before we drew an Oompa Loompa. I think you might be just as shocked as I am. I use fine liners for my line work every time I paint outside, so it's really important that I have pens that are both waterproof and smudge proof, since I mostly work with watercolour and I work quickly. I think these fine liners are as good as the Faber-Castell Pit fine liners, and that's saying something. 
They've been my staple art supplies since the very beginning, and I've since tested out these pens with watercolour, and they are completely waterproof. For the price, I really wasn't expecting much. I mean, it's hard to get fine liners right, but they have, and they didn't smudge at all with the markers. I mean, I don't know how common that is, since I'm not familiar with alcohol markers, but if they can handle watercolour, I'm pretty sure they can stay put with any medium. Going into this drawing, I know I said I was going to make the skin tone pink. I kind of forgot and went straight in with yellow. It was a habit, I guess. So then I decided to make it bold, but cohesive. In theory, the skin tone may be yellow, but if there's yellow in the hair and in the clouds, then it's an artistic choice. Top tip there, if the colour ever looks funky, just add more of that colour to the rest of the piece, and it might just tie it together. I'm saying that now whilst remembering a ton of pieces I didn't do this for, and how that might have actually worked. Hmm... Sometimes with watercolour, it can cover the fine liner up and you need to go over it again, so that's what I was expecting. And honestly, I'm really surprised that these markers are somehow more transparent than watercolour. Like, I didn't need to go over the fine liner at all, which made the whole process easy and quite relaxing, really. Considering the earlier attempts, I'm really surprised that I felt at ease with this drawing. It's always good to practice before trying to create something, and I think that did really help. I think you should experiment and explore and see what you can do. Obviously, the paper is better than the diary that I'm drawing in, like a million times better. So I did notice that, and I thought that was interesting. So that obviously helped. Something I did notice about the paper and thought was interesting is that the paper is very smooth. The only noticeable difference between my last pad and this one is that this one is a marker pad whilst the last one was mixed media. The paper feels really nice to draw on, it's probably the smoothest paper that I own. I'm not really able to compare these Ahuhu markers to any others since I've only really tried water-based and mixed brush markers. This is my first alcohol marker set. I noticed that the smell is far better than Sharpies. I remember using them at school and everyone getting headaches because the smell was so bad. I used these markers for the entire day and the smell wasn't a problem. I think the biggest find though was just how much these markers look like watercolour. I always thought markers were kind of solid, streaky blocks of bright colours, sort of like the brush markers that I've used before on this channel. And honestly, I was so surprised to see that they actually have a watercolour kind of look to them, but especially some of the lighter shades, they look like they could easily be watercolour. Even in the first layer, there's hardly any lines. I'm sure it's possible to create amazing blends, but that's going to take a little bit more practice. This is a first attempt, so there's a lot of room for improvement. But still, I feel like I'm kind of figuring out certain techniques already. I'd watched a few videos before this, and let me tell you, as a complete noob, it's a lot harder to use markers for the first time than those tips videos made out. Believe me, I had tried to follow those mini tutorials, and it just didn't blend like in those videos. I mean, you saw, didn't you? And if you're experienced with markers, it was probably a little bit painful watching me try and fail to create any kind of blend, so I'm sorry if you watched it and felt that. These things take time, and I think it's important to show that. In theory, I could have opened the markers, used them for a week off camera, and then popped back to create the first drawing, but that's not realistic. It's a brand new medium, and this is reality. It takes several pages to figure out the basics, and several more drawings before you feel like you've actually got the hang of it. That's completely normal, and I think that's important. So that's why you saw me create some really bad doodles. But you know what? I think with this final drawing, I've redeemed myself. It's been a really cool day trying out a new medium. These are really good markers. Even as a complete beginner, I've been able to create something pretty good, which means it really didn't take long to get the hang of them. 
They stay wet for a while and can be blended out on a paper pretty easily if you have a similar colour to hand, which obviously I wasn't doing at the beginning. I'm really impressed and I want to see what else I can create going forward when I've actually got experience with the medium. I think there's so much potential. I love the colour palette for this piece. I love that it's slightly pastel with really pretty shades. I also completely understand the hype around pastel marker sets now. The lighter shades are really good for blending. I found it easiest to pop the colours down and almost layer the lighter shade on top. That's the only way I could really get a decent blend with this drawing. I'm sure I'll figure out more down the line. I did decide to add a little more fine liner to this piece. The hair was looking pretty flat at this point and I think this was a fantastic decision, if I do say so myself. It really completes the piece, though I also love that the background doesn't have any fine liner and it looks almost a little blurry. I think it's a pretty cool effect. This portrait is whimsical and I love it. It has personality whilst being cute and somewhat semi-realistic. This is the direction that my art style is going in. Oh, we're all done, and honestly, I'm so happy with how this has turned out. It's the very first page in the brand new sketchbook. The bleed through is a little bit scary. How good does that look? And now every time I open the sketchbook, that's what we're gonna see. I think already we've come far from the Oompa Loompa. Honestly, I'm so happy with how this drawing has gone. Thank you so much to Ahuhu again for letting me try these markers. It was a little bit sketch at the beginning, but I really enjoyed that final drawing and I can't wait to use them again. Thank you for joining me and thank you so much for 4K. Honestly, that's amazing. I hope you've enjoyed doing a little challenge with me. Honestly, there's no not many more mediums for me to try, I've done so many. We've made quite a few first time videos now, so if you've enjoyed this one, I'll leave a couple down below that are similar. And if you'd like to see me use markers again, give this video a like to let me know. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye bye.